Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Steven. This is Northwest Small Batch Brewing. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, something called Suckback. Uh, this is an interesting one. Um, as I get started here, if you uh, like this channel and content, consider hitting the subscribe button. It is the best way to help support my channel so that I can keep putting out more content. Ah, let's see. So, suck back. Um, uh, this is gonna be a quick video, I think, because it's super hot here. It's like over 100 degrees this week, so I'll keep it short. Uh, basically, if you're not familiar with suck back, uh, it's basically um, a pressure thing. So, a lot of people like to cold crash their beer, where they take the beer at the end of their fermentation cycle and they chill it down to like 35 degrees, or some of you even try to go lower than that. I don't, but. Uh, it's very common with loggers, right? At the end of the lagering, uh, well, as part of the lagering process, you basically cold crash it and keep it cold for a period of time. So the problem is that when you have an airlock sitting on your fermenter filled with like sanitizer, for example, uh, and you start to change the uh, temperature, the pressure changes between the inside and the outside of the fermenter and it will start to suck in atmosphere from the outside. There's two problems with that. Number one is it's pulling oxygen into the fermenter and then you're gonna oxidize your beer. And the second problem is that as it's sucking in the atmosphere, it's, it's pulling in any fluid, like the sanitizer, that's in your airlock down into your beer. Now, it's not usually that much sanitizer in the airlock that it would be devastating, but you don't want it in there. Plus, the, 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 there's two main reasons for an airlock, right? One is to keep the oxygen out. The other is to keep bugs out, like flies and gnats and any spiders, you know? So, I mean, if there's anything that gets into your airlock, that's going to get sucked down into your beer, and that's kind of gross. So, how do you fix this suckback issue? Well, it's there's a couple ways, right? It depends on what you ferment in. If you know you're going to have to cold crash, um, consider fermenting in something that can handle the pressure. And uh, it really helps to have a keg, uh, like a kegerator, like setup, right? Uh, I know not everybody can do that, but uh, I also don't think you need to cold crash in the fermenter. So if you're not using a keg at all, you're just bottling all your beer, bottle it like you normally do at room temperature. And then once it carbonates, then car cold crash the bottles by putting all the bottles in wherever you're going to put them bring them down to like 35 degrees and hold them there for whatever amount of time you want. That's so you can cold crash in the bottle. If you're doing it in the fermenter, uh, there's two options that I know of. Uh, the easy mode way and the way I do it is that you take your fermenter and it's either going to be a keg, like a corny keg or an all rounder. And you throw that into your kegerator or whatever and you put the gas on it. And you give it like, I mean, really, what I've been reading is you need about 15 PSI. That's going to be your pressure difference. So you put the gas on, you turn it up to 15 PSI, you purge the any air out of the um, you know fermenter, leave the gas connected. You can leave the liquid off, it doesn't matter. And then you cold crash it. So as it's you know adjusting the pressure, it's actually going to be sucking in CO2 from the tank and starting to carbonate as opposed to pulling oxygen in. Now, if you're using a standard fermenter, the only way I know of that I've seen, and I've never tried it, but it sounds pretty uh, wonky to me, and you know, I don't know, but basically you use a balloon. Uh, you have to obviously empty the fluid out of your um, airlock. And if you use an S airlock, that's probably the best way to go. And uh, I don't know why, but for some reason, everybody uses Mylar balloons. Those are the foil, like silvery looking balloons. Um, maybe they, they hold up better to the CO2, I'm not sure, uh, but there's two ways to go about it. You fill the balloon with CO2 from your tank and then quickly put that onto your airlock and use some electrical tape or something to try to secure it uh, and make it as airtight, I guess, as you can. Um, the other way is if you can time it just right, you could put the balloon empty on the airlock and tape it and as the fermentation is finishing, it's going to fill the balloon with its own fermentation gas. Like I said, you have to time it right because if you don't, your balloon's going to end up filling too much and either pop or, or pull off. You know, it's going to lose its connection because it's going to be too much 
CO2 in the balloon, or you won't have enough, right? It won't, it won't have enough CO2 in the balloon. So, but the point is that when you go to cold crash, instead of pulling in oxygen, it's going to suck in the CO2 that's in that balloon instead. One last thing I want to, so that, those are the only two methods. I mean, people have done other things, um, but I want to point out one thing because some people say, well, just take the, you know, liquid out and, and run with a dry airlock or whatever. Well, first of all, you can still, you're going to still get bugs depending where you live. Some people have more problem with bugs than others, um, that are going to get in there. The other thing is, um, there's a myth. And I see this pop up like in forums and stuff quite a bit where it's a debate that goes on, right? As to whether or not if you take the lid off an airlock, for example, some people are trying to say you're protected because there's a layer of CO2 sitting on top of your, um, you know, your, your wort or your beer. And uh, that's going to protect it from oxygen for a short period of time. Well, I don't think it does. And there's a lot of people that don't think it that it does, but I just watched a Kegland video uh, that has nothing to do with that, but they were in a lab and they were talking to the lab and they asked them about it. And their response was, look, CO2 and oxygen molecules are tiny, right? You need like an electron microscope to be able to even see these things. So they're so small that there's no reason at all that they can't pass by each other. So just because there's a layer of CO2 in your fermenter, this, that's not going to stop oxygen from getting down to your beer because it easily passes through that layer of CO2. It's not like, you know, at that microscopic level, it's not like a, you know, a, a wall, you know, it can easily pass by and intermingles. And so it's, it's all kind of intermingled. So don't believe that myth. At least I wouldn't, um, try to keep your fermenter closed as much as possible. If you must like open it try to open it while there's still some fermentation going on so that it will scrub that oxygen out that you happen to maybe introduced anyway that's what i have i hope i kept it short i don't know yet uh until i edit it but uh thanks for stopping by appreciate it and uh we'll be back probably in another week with another video and uh until then keep on brewing <laughs>